Last week, Apple announced the third generation of iPhone SE with their fastest silicon and cellular, premium build quality, and premium camera quality, all for just $430. But it lacks in quite a few areas Apple doesn't want you to know about, so with everything this odd package has to offer, is the iPhone SE good enough to beat the competition? And should you buy one yourself? Now, the way the mid-range segment of the smartphone market typically works is companies try to make their phones at about $400 as flashy as possible to stand out with expansive OLED screens and big batteries, but then cheap out in areas that reduce the cost of the phone, like a worse camera system, a less capable chip, and cheaper materials on the outside of the phone. But this is not how Apple does it. See, Apple has a reputation for only putting out top class products. So if one day they decide to announce an iPhone made from plastic with all kinds of bloatware and super stretch marketing, they would never be forgiven. So the way Apple does lower cost phones is instead cheaping out on using old designs, far worse screens, and no real excitement in camera hardware. That's how they did things with the last iPhone I see in 2020, and that's pretty much how it's done now. So what did Apple prioritize at a phone for $430? Well, quite a lot of good stuff. Apple brought over the latest A15 Bionic chip from the iPhone 13 series, meaning instantly better performance than any phone, even at the flagship end of the Android side, and 5G, which I think Apple simply does the best. They support the most bands out of a phone at its price, and they have features like smart data mode to optimize your usage so it only uses 5G when it needs to. And it's so exciting to get this incredible 5G experience at a phone at this price. And build quality. While copying the design of the nearly five-year-old iPhone 8, it's still made from solid glass and aluminum, or for my British viewers, aluminium. All of this makes the iPhone SE 2022 feel like a top-class product. And the camera is also solid. While only a single camera and using pretty old hardware, the camera software and image signal processor in the A15 Bionic chip means that you'll get some stunning photos, but in some instances, completely destroy any other mid-range phone, especially with portrait mode and the new photographic styles. But while it seems like with all these things, there's pretty much no downsides to the iPhone SE, there's actually quite a few. For starters, I'm really disappointed that there's an old design here. This small, fat, bezeled, single-cameraed, outdated look doesn't scream modern technology, even if that's precisely what it offers. But at the same time, this is kind of how they can make it so affordable. Because remember, the cost of a phone isn't just the bill of components, the combined cost of every part in an individual phone, but also the factories and machines that allow them to be put together. Because Apple uses the old design, they don't need expensive new machines. But even if you don't mind the old design, another sore point with this phone is the terrible screen. This 4.7 inch LCD, not even full HD, 60 hertz panel that doesn't even have tap to wake. This is literally the same screen from the two-year-old iPhone SE 2, which is the same screen as the near five-year-old iPhone 8, which is pretty darn close to the screen on the nearly eight-year-old iPhone 6. It's instantly worse than any Android competition at this price. But there's one, one more thing. thing. One major bit of info that could change everything. While all these negatives of the old design and horrible screen were also present in the 2020 iPhone SE, did they fix the worst problem of that phone, the garbage battery life? In the 2020 iPhone SE, you got a tiny 1,821 milliamp hour battery, which could barely get you any juice throughout your day. And it's for this reason that me and so many other people strongly recommended against buying that phone. So did Apple fix the battery issue? Well, maybe. We haven't been given an exact battery size yet, but Apple said that by re-engineering internal components and using new battery chemistry, they've been able to make the battery larger. Plus the addition of the slightly more power efficient A15 Bionic chip should mean a bit better battery life. So we'll have to see if that makes a huge difference and if that makes the battery life solid. But assuming that it is, I think the iPhone SE could be a viable option for certain types of people. Maybe kids or teens getting their first phone, or if you want to try iOS before fully committing to a higher class iPhone model, or your grandparents who are upgrading from a far older phone or a flip phone. Once again, I seriously wish Apple added a better screen and introduced a new design, but for the market Apple's targeting with this new offering, those are pretty small drawbacks. But with that in mind, if you're willing to go with a used phone, you can find the iPhone 12 mini from 2020 with a far better OLED screen, nearly identical performance, battery life on par or better, cameras that genuinely impress, and the modern iPhone design. All these benefits over the new SE are available for not too much of a price premium, just assuming that you're willing to buy a phone from a used site like Swappa instead of buying something brand new. But with that, I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments if you think this new iPhone SE will beat the rest of the competition on the mid-range market. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe down below with notifications on so you never miss my next video and share it with someone who may find it helpful. But with that, I'm Max. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.